Hello FPL managers, today we have a look at the final draft team selection for the brand new FPL season. In today's video, we have a look at the final squad that we have selected coming to GamaCon of the new campaign, as I'm very excited about how the team is lining up. If you guys do want to get the extra edge this FPL season, then click the top link in the description to get yourselves a 65% off Fantasy Football Fix Premium, and also get yourselves a free strategy guide. So just before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to show support for the channel, as we're trying to hit 3,000 subs by game week 1, and also click that notification bell so you guys don't miss any future uploads, and with that being said, let's get into the video. So having a look at the team reveal, we have gone with Sanchez and Foster as the two goalkeepers. This combination has been staying the same for the last couple of weeks, as I definitely back in these players to get some nice points, especially considering their price tag. Sanchez at 4.5 million looks to be the best value for his price, as they have Burnley, Watford and Brentford as three out of their first four fixtures. Foster and Sanchez are the second and third highest on keepers respectively, but I definitely think there's some promising options to have for the start of the new season. Sanchez did average around one clean sheet every three matches last year, as he did get himself over 100 points. So now since he is the nailed on number one keeper, he definitely looks to be a nice choice with a couple of Brighton defenders coming back from injury as well. And then Foster at 4 million looks to be very nice value. He may get some starting minutes for Watford this season, but I do think Backman is the number one option. But actually in last year's EFL season, they did share the games 18 each. So there is a decent chance of him potentially getting starting minutes. And moving on to the defense, we have gone with four at the back for the first game maker, starting for Trent Alexander-Arnold. Here's another one that has been in my squad for a while now, but despite being seven 0.5 million pounds, I think he's just such a good option. He is probably the most attacking defender in the Premier League and does have the highest XA to show for it. Amongst defenders, his expected assists were sitting at 8.5, compared to the second highest which was Cresswell at just 7.39. He does also have the highest expected assists per 90 minutes as well, so he is definitely a nice player to have all round. Also, with the Liverpool defenders coming back into the team, such as the likes of Van Dijk, Matip and Gomez, it should show up their defence to get themselves a couple more clean sheets. So with Norwich, Burnley, Chelsea and Leeds their first four matches, you definitely would expect Trent Alexander-Arnold to make a great start to the new FBL season. And moving on to another high-end defender, it is Luke Shaw. Coming in with a 53.7% ownership, it does make him the highest owned player in FPL, which did come as a bit of a surprise to me. He is currently 3% more owned than Mo Salah and 20% more owned than any other defender in the game, and it is clear to see why, as he looks to be good value at 5.5 million. Despite only playing 2600 minutes last year, he did get himself 124 FPL points, as he recorded 1 goal, 5 assists and 10 clean sheets. He did look decent in the preseason game and of course in the Euros as well, so with Leeds, Southampton, Wolves and Newcastle as their first First four, you would also expect him to be one of the highest scoring defenders after the first four weeks. Moving on to Vladimir Sufal, he is coming in half a million pounds cheaper than Luke Shaw at 5 million and is a moderate differential with a 15.2% ownership. He is currently the 7th highest owned defender in FPL, but looks to be great value for his price tag. He got himself 128 FPL points last year with 9 assists and 9 clean sheets and did actually have one of the highest expected assists amongst defenders. He did rank 4th only behind Alexander Arnold, Crespel and Robertson with an expected assist of 6.36. Also, his expected assists per 90 numbers are very similar to the likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold and Luke Shaw, as his is sitting at 0.2, compared to Shaw's 0.22 and Alexander-Arnold's 0.25. So hopefully West Ham can make a nice start to the season in terms of their clean sheets, as they face Newcastle, Leicester, Palace and Southampton as their first four. And moving on to the fourth starting defender this week, it is Ben White. Coming in at 4.5 million pounds, the new Arsenal signing looks to be great value at the back for them, as he should be getting some nice starting minutes. With Brentford in the first game week, this is a promising fixture for Arsenal to get themselves a clean sheet in, and it is clear to see why 24.9% of managers own him. Obviously, he doesn't offer much attacking potential, but Arsenal did actually have one of the lowest expected goals conceded last year, so if they can carry in this good form to this year, then you definitely would expect them to improve on their clean sheet count. So for a nailed on Arsenal defender at 4.5 million who does face Brentford in the first week, he seems to be a nice value option. And as the bench option for defenders, we have gone with Luke Ayling coming in at 4.5 million pounds. Ayling was the fifth highest scoring defender at 4.5 million pounds last year, as he got himself 100 FPL points. Luke Ayling was very unlucky not to get himself a goal or assist last season, as he was predicted to get 4.9 expected score evolvements, but did only record zero. So you would expect him to improve on that this year, and he did get himself 12 clean sheets last season as well, so hopefully Leeds can get more clean sheets this year with a couple of defenders coming back from injury. They obviously have a fairly tricky start to the season where they face United and Everton as their first two, so that's why Ayling is on the bench, but then in game week three he does face Burnley away, which I hopefully will start him for. Now moving on to the midfielders, we have gone with four in the middle of the park as well, starting off with Riyad Mahrez. 
Mahrez is coming in at £9 million and in my opinion is slightly underpriced as he did get himself 145 points last year in just 1900 minutes. This came about as he got himself 9 goals and 8 assists as he looked very dangerous for Man City. He also currently only has a 6.9% ownership so could present himself as a good differential option to start the season. Mahrez is projected to be the 6th highest scoring midfielder after the first 6 weeks by Fantasy Football Fix as he is expected to get 28 points. This is very impressive, but it does make him an all the more tempting option for the start of the season, especially since Man City have that fixture against Norwich in Game Week 2, which I'll be definitely keen to have that Man City attacking asset for. Moving on to Ishmael Assar, he is another differential option in midfield with just a 3.8% ownership. Coming in at £6 million, I think he is a nice value option, as he did play in the 2019-2020 Premier League season, getting himself 5 goals and 7 assists in just 2,000 minutes. This is obviously a very good attacking return for the amount of time he played, and with Watford's nice starting fixtures of Villa, Brighton, Spurs and Wolves, I would expect him to make a nice start to the year. Saar is projected to be the 9th highest scoring midfielder for game week 1, and at just £6 million, I think he is such a nice value option. And moving on to Mohamed Salah, he is a very nice choice to have in midfield with a very high 50.1% ownership. This does make him the second highest owned player in FPL, and is coming as the most expensive player at £12.5 million. I definitely think the investment is worth it as he was a very high scoring player last year, getting himself an impressive 231 total points. He also had the second highest expected goals out of any player last season, which was sitting at around 20. This was only behind Harry Kane and Seller is on penalties as well, which does make him a more tempting option. With Norwich, Burnley, Chelsea and Leeds their first four matches, Liverpool have a nice run of fixtures from an attacking standpoint, which would of course mean Seller getting all the points. He is projected to get the most points for game week 1, which is sitting at 7, so for that reason he is on captaincy as well. And to cap off the midfield, it is yet another differential option, Sadio Mane. Seller's teammate is coming in half a million pounds cheaper and only has a 4.3% ownership. His underlying stats were actually very similar to the likes of Bruno Fernandes last season, so if you are looking for a differential option compared to him, then he could be a nice choice. Mane only had a one lower expected goals than Bruno Fernandes last year, so considering how differential he is and Liverpool's great starting fixtures, he's a nice enticing option. And as the bench option for midfield is Josh Brownhill at 4.5 million. He did get himself a couple of goals in pre-season for Burnley, and he's a nice budget enabler, which allows me to spend my money around the squad. Now moving on to the forwards, we have gone with two strikers up top, starting off with Ings. Ings is coming in at 8 million pounds and has sent a recent move to Aston Villa, which I think should increase his points. He did get himself 131 points last year in just 2100 minutes, getting himself 12 goals and 4 assists, but I do think he can improve on this this season with his new move to Villa. He is currently one of the most popular forwards with a 26.2% ownership, as he has the first three fixtures of Watford at Newcastle and Brentford, which are looking great for FPL points. And his strike partner is Mikel Antonio, coming in at £7.5 million, who is also a very highly owned striker with a 20.1% ownership. He did have the highest expected goals per 90 last year, which was sitting at 0.64, tied with Harry Kane, and with him facing Newcastle, Leicester, Palace, and Southampton as their first four matches, he would definitely be expected to make a nice start to the season as well. And as the third forward, we have gone with the bench option in Obafemi, who potentially could get starting minutes for Southampton, but after their recent signings of Armstrong, I'm not too sure about this. Depending on if Obafemi stays at Southampton, I may switch him to another 4.5 forward as these players will only be on the bench regardless. So that's all we've got today for the final draft team selection for Game Week 1 of the new FPL season. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to show support for the channel as we'll get you on hit 3,000 subs by Game Week 1. Also, click that notification bell so guys don't miss any future uploads and leave a comment on what you guys thought of this team and drop your final drafts in the comments down below. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.